Well, good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Hallelujah on this Friday. And welcome to Women of Grace, Voice in the Wilderness. And uh, I'm Sister Jackie. And we have been uh, studying out of the book of Romans. Hallelujah. And we're on just lesson six. And we're finishing up lesson, lesson six. And it's not, I'm not going to be long before you. Because once I finish lesson six, um, I must continue on to obtain lesson seven. But um, it is a beautiful morning this morning on uh, Friday. Uh, there's clouds out. They say that it's supposed to rain. But um, glory to God. Thank him for the rain. And uh, this morning I woke up and got on my knees and, and talked to the Father concerning some things on my heart. And, and I pray that all is well with you and that the Lord is blessing you spiritually and strengthening you and healing your body. We left off yesterday talking about um, the three, the two evil influences that is in the world, which Christ came to save us from. We talked about salvation. We talked about the devil. We talked about the world. Uh, we talked about what he has uh, come to save us from. And today we're picking up on um, the overwhelming circumstances and physical bondage, which we did not finish and complete on yesterday. So let us go into prayer. Father, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you, Father, that we have found favor in your sight because you woke us up. We thank you for your grace, O oh Lord, that you pour out on us each day, Father, for your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for your word, O oh Lord. And we ask, O oh Father, that you would give us understanding, comprehension, knowledge of your word and what your spirit is saying to us, the body of believers, in this time and hour, O oh Lord. Help us to understand, Father, salvation, that we may be able, Father, to explain it to others, O oh Lord, as we wait upon you, Father. For your word said, except the spirit draws them, they would not come. So, Father, as you draw the lost to yourself, Father, as you draw them by your spirit and by Christ, O oh Lord, give us the words to say, O oh Father. Show us and teach us how to minister salvation to the lost, Lord. How to touch their hearts, O oh Father. Because we know that you're working, O oh Father to draw them. And we thank you, Lord, that you write your word upon the tables of our heart that we may not sin against you, Father. And if we have, Lord, forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. We may have sinned on our way to work, Father, by someone that was in front of us that agitated us, O Lord, or someone cut in front of us, Father. We got upset, Lord. Forgive us, O Father. Teach us, Father, the ways of love, O oh Lord, the ways and attitude, Father, the spirit of love, O oh Lord, that we will bless, Father, our enemies and not curse them, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Well, beloved, turn your swords uh, to Romans chapter 8. And this is talking about overwhelming circumstances that's Romans chapter 8 hallelujah verse 28 we're just going to touch a little bit on um, th this verse in Romans chapter 8 and it, it deals with the circumstances that we are faced with in our lives it said through Christ no circumstance or problem need overwhelm us for he brings us through in victory and plans everything to work out for our best and later on in our roman study we're going to come to romans chapter 8 and we're going to study that but right now I'm gonna, I'm, i just want to speak a little bit on circumstances 
Romans chapter 8, verse 28 reads out the Amplified, and we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. All things work together for good. I know that sometimes it may not seem that things are working out for our good. Sometimes the enemy magnifies the circumstance and the problem so big that we do not see the hand of the Lord in that situation. And uh, we begin to fret and worry, hallelujah, about our circumstances. But here in Romans 8.28, it says that all things <clears throat> are working together for our good. Hallelujah. And that it's a plan, it's a reason, it's a purpose that we go through the things that we go through. In my walk, um, there were some things that I have uh, went through and uh, some mistakes that I've made. And I didn't understand why all this was going on. And, um, you know, the enemy knows the plan, the call that's upon your life. And he was caused circumstances to happen in your life to cause you to doubt God, to fear, God, to fear, to walk in fear, and, and to begin to try to work out the situation on your own. Um, but we must have the confidence and assurance that God knows what he's doing. And, and you know, the enemy cannot uh, touch us except he asks permission from the Lord. If you read the book of Job, Satan had to get permission from the Lord. Hallelujah. To even try Job, even with Peter. Um, sometimes we have unconfessed sin in our life, in our hearts, in our souls. And that is another way, that's a doorway that is open for Satan to enter in. That we sometimes give him a legal right to cause havoc in our lives, to um, bring situations upon us, to test and try us. And sometimes those tests and trials are there to try our faith. Will you continue to trust in the Lord in your circumstances? And I know for me, I can only speak for myself, that um, at a point, things got so rough, I began to doubt the Lord. But yet I still cried unto him for answers. And, and I could never say, say it again. I cried unto him and he delivered me. But it was there to try my faith. Do I truly, really, truly trust in the promises of the Lord? Do I trust in him to bring me out of the circumstance? And it got to the point where I asked the Lord, I said, Father, what is it that you want me to learn from this trial, in this trial? Hallelujah. And most of the time it was learning uh, to be humble, to be patient, to still walk in love when... Uh, people are rising up against you and persecuting you. Can you still walk in love towards them? And love doesn't necessarily mean um, that you are uh, you accept anything that they bring, but walking in love is mean not cursing them, hallelujah, under your breath or, or praying evil against them. But to walk in love and to bless them, Jesus said to bless your enemies, not curse them, to bless them that the Lord will bring them into the true revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let's jump down to verse 35 in Romans chapter 8, and it reads, Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or phantom, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? Just as it is written and forever remains written, God's word never changes. For your sake we are put to death all day long. 
we are regarded as sheep for the slaughter. You know that sheep, they do not buy, buy when they are being led to the slaughter. They do not complain. Hallelujah. They do not get angry. They do not fret. Hallelujah. But they are trusting their shepherd. Glory to God. And we're led like sheep to the slaughter. Every day it says here in verse 36. And, and when Jesus was led to the cross, he did not complain. He did not. He The only time that he went to his father in prayer was in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was inquiring of the Father, if there was some other way, hallelujah, that man can be saved. And he prayed this prayer three times, and, and each time that he prayed it, he ended with, not my will, thy will be done. So we have to come to that point in our lives of any circumstances that we're going through, any trial, any problems, any situations, that we pray, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And, and, you know, we want to get out that situation. We, we want to get out the, the trouble that's causing our soul pain. Um, but we must come to that point where, Lord, not my will, your will be done. And also in, in asking the Father, what is this, it that you desire for me to learn in this situation? Because things happen to us so that we may be able to comfort those that are, in the, that, that are going through similar situations that we have already been through hallelujah verse uh, 37 yet in all these things we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us we have the victory in christ the messiah he has overcome the world and um, when we abide in him, stick close to him, cling to him, he is the one that is fighting our battles. We just have to yield, yield our spirit, yield ourselves unto his leading and teaching. Verse 38, for I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the ultimate, unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, who died for you. Who, who went, who, he was not touched by the feelings of our infirmities. In all matters, he was tempted yet without sin. And we are to seek the Lord. Well, Lord, how is it that you was tempted, but yet you did not sin? Christ was totally yielded to the will of his father, Yahweh. He was a man come in the flesh. He was word that came in the flesh. He, he, he hungered, he got tired, he got weary. Everything that we went go through in our lifetime, Christ has already went through it with us. So he said, nothing shall ever be able to separate you from the love of Christ, the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And when we look to him, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, even though we are being tried, even though our circumstances may not be so pleasant, uh, even though we are going through that we are persecuted and tried, we are to come before the Father, seeking His face and saying, Father, your will will be done. But teach me what it is that you want me to learn out of the circumstance. Everything that we go through is to try our faith, to teach us, to draw closer to Christ. Uh, he has delivered us, saved us from physical bondages. Salvation involves our whole being, spirit, soul, and body. Speaking of the ministry of the Lord Jesus when he healed the sick and demon-possessed, Matthew writes in Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, this was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah, he took our infirmities, he took up our infirmities, 
and carried our diseases. Each person that he had healed, hallelujah, he took those infirmities. He carried those diseases upon himself, hallelujah, while setting that person free that was in physical bondage. Glory to God. He delivered those that were possessed, hallelujah, of demons. He delivered them. He set them free by the power of by the power of his father through the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53. And Isaiah spoke this in prophecy uh, um, way before Christ was even born that part of his ministry would be to take our infirmities, our sicknesses. And Isaiah 53 verse 4 reads, But in fact he has brought our griefs, and he has carried our sorrows and pains. Yet we ignorantly assume that he was stricken, struck down by God and degraded and humiliated by him. Let's read verse 5 too. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, wounds, we are healed. We are healed both spiritually, soul-wise, and body. God has come to heal all three areas of who we are. Our spirit, our soul, and our body. And Christ took all of that up on himself. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And I'm going to read that out of the Amplified Bible, and it reads, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, that is, separate you from profane and vulgar things, make you pure and whole and undamaged, consecrate to him, set apart for his purpose, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read that over again. He said, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. It is God our Father, Yahweh, that sanctifies us through and through. It is him that does the work on the inside of us. He said that that is, he separates us from profane and vulgar things. He makes us pure and whole and undamaged, consecrated to him, set apart for him. Hallelujah, set apart for his purpose. It is not our us, ourselves, that do this work, but it's the God of peace himself that does the work on the inside of us. And Paul said, goes on to say, may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Let's also look at uh, 3 John, 3 John chapter 2, hallelujah, 3 John Verse 2, and it reads, Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. Here he says that he, he it is his desire. He said, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health Physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. When we are feeding ourselves spiritual food, which is the word of God, our soul, uh, um, we are, it, it affects our health. Hallelujah. We are in good health. The, the uh, spiritual food, hallelujah, strengthens our body physically. We prosper in both areas 
uh, spirit, soul, and body. The key of faith. Only one ingredient is needed in man to release God's power to work in his life and bring him salvation. And that is faith. Salvation is to everyone who believes, whether Jew or Gentile, Greek or barbarian. Let's take another look at Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Romans chapter 1 verse 17, which reads again, For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed. It says, For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith. Disclosed in a way that awakens more faith, as it is written and forever remains written, the just and upright shall live by faith. Hallelujah. The gospel is, re uh, the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in there are the words of Christ, the Messiah. He taught both on the kingdom of of his father Yahweh and he talked about the kingdom of Satan hallelujah we live in two realms there are only two kingdoms the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God and and Christ spoke on those things and in order to learn of Christ we must read of Christ read his words meditate upon his words write his words upon the tables of our heart and, the, and God's righteousness is revealed in the gospel. And it increases our faith, that, which leads us to more faith. Trusting in Christ, the Messiah. Leaning upon him and relying upon him. And uh, Romans 1.17, where in one verse Paul gives a summary of the message of Romans. He said, a righteousness from God is revealed. Righteousness means to be in right relationship with God. Or in other words, to be able to stand before God without any sense that we fall short of a standard of goodness. In the gospel, the message of Christ's work on our behalf, God's righteousness is freely given to the believer. A Christian is made righteous by his faith in what Christ has done. It is not anything that we can do to make us righteous. Hallelujah. It's nothing that we can do, not doing works that make us righteous, but we are made righteous by faith in what Christ has done for us. Hallelujah. By shedding his blood on Calvary, by going through the things that he went through or, uh, through in his lifetime. These things he have done for us. Hallelujah. Also, this righteousness is by faith from first to last. Faith in Christ makes us righteous and gives us eternal life. And faith in Christ maintain, maintains us through life now. Cr faith in Christ is keeping us now. Hallelujah. Thus, faith is both the beginning of the Christian life and the ongoing lifestyle of the Christian. It is by faith. Hallelujah. It is by faith trusting in the promises of what the Lord Jesus had said. It is faith, faith, trusting in the cross of Calvary. Trusting that his blood was enough. Hallelujah. That his blood, hallelujah, was shed to wash away our sins. And to reconcile us back to God. Trusting in what he has done. And it's a day to day life. It's a lifestyle. Hallelujah. It's just not something that we do on Sundays. It is a lifestyle. Hallelujah. Feeling, uh, feeding our spiritual man with spiritual food. And that's the word of God. We cannot take the things of the world to feed our spirit. Because we are spiritual beings. We must read, take the word of God, feed upon the word of God to strengthen our spiritual man. We must remember, always remember, beloved, that from the time you were born 
up until the day that you received Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your minds were programmed to the things of this world, to the God of this world. So we need to reprogram our minds, hallelujah, be born again of water and the Spirit, and renew our minds by reading the Word of God, by staying in His presence, by meditating upon the Word of God. Hallelujah. And it's, it's just not a Sunday thing. You just can't go to church on a Saturday and Sunday and that's it. Hallelujah. Because there's this many things that's going on in this world. I have to pray before I go to work because I'm surrounded by worldly things. Uh, uh, listening to worldly music and I have to pray, Lord, your grace fall on me, cover me at the job. Hallelujah. Because the enemy is on the job. He's at the job. I've seen a post on Facebook that witchcraft is in the workplace, and that is true. People are praying against you. People are praying against you to fail. Hallelujah. Yesterday, I had to take time out on my break and, and ask the Lord to forgive me uh, because, I, uh, because I had got a little attitude because of what was going on. And, and as, some, as a young man there, whenever he's there, things are not right. And um, we want to put it, put the blame on me for a job he's not doing. So I had to pray, Lord, forgive me, Father. And, and I had to bind that spirit of confusion and separation and fault finding. I had to come against that spirit. Hallelujah. And I had to le loose the peace of God within my workplace, covered in the blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Because there's people on your job that... that they don't know that they're doing this. They don't know that they're being used by the enemy to agitate you, to cause you to retaliate. They don't know this, but you know this. Hallelujah. And we must pray the peace and blessings of God in our work area, in our workplace, the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But it's by faith. In Christ, our, our walk with Christ is a daily lifestyle. It's a daily fight. It's a daily war. Hallelujah. In these two foundational verses, Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, Paul reveals the two vital ingredients of the gospel, which is God's power. It is God's power to save. And it is man's faith. It is our faith. Hallelujah that releases the power of God in our lives, in our, in our soul man, hallelujah, by believing the gospel of Christ. These two, when combined together, produce salvation, righteousness, and eternal life. When we combine the power of God, hallelujah, and our faith, placing our faith in the power of God to save us, Salvation is produced. Righteousness is produced. Eternal life is produced. We cannot save ourselves, beloved. There's nothing that we can do that can save us. It's our faith in Christ the Messiah and what he has done on Calvary for us. Hallelujah. Being obedient to the word of Yahweh. Being obedient to do the word. And, and we must learn to do the word. What Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, had taught in the Gospels, we must do the word. We cannot just be hearers of the word only, but we must be doers of the word. In other words, putting what we have learned into practice. And then when we feed upon the word of God, we give the Holy Spirit, uh, some, uh, we give the Holy Spirit, something to bring up in our spiritual in our spirit in our minds to remind us of what Christ has said if we're not putting anything in our spirit how can the holy spirit remind you of what Christ said if you have not yourself put what Christ said in you hallelujah so we must feed upon the word of god upon the gospels hallelujah of jesus christ learn what he has said write those things upon your heart by regurgitating it, memorizing it, 
and, and, and hallelujah, storing it in your heart. We must guard our heart in this, this evil and wicked day. We must guard our heart. You know, um, coming up in my walk with Christ, many would say I had a wall around me. I, yes, it was the Lord that placed me in a fortified city. It was not me, myself, and I would look at them. I, I, I didn't understand what they were saying because to me, I didn't feel like I had a wall up around me. And, you know, as people in the church that want to peer in, hallelujah, to see, see you. Hallelujah. But God hides his faithful ones away. God places his faithful ones in a fortified city. And that is a wall, hallelujah, that blocks out the enemy. Hallelujah. Some of us are being prepared by the Lord and we are hidden in Christ the Messiah until the time that he sets us forth to do the work that he has called us to do. So when, um, when the enemy comes and bring accusations and um, falseness, lies, trust in the Lord. Lean upon the Lord. Rely upon the Lord. Know his word. Know it. Hallelujah. And the enemy takes the word of God and twists the word of God. He did it in Genesis chapter 3. He twisted the word of God. He caused Eve to doubt Hallelujah, what God has said. And he said, if you eat of this tree, you will die. But he put an if there to cause Eve to doubt what God has said. That, oh, he, he's not, what he's saying is not true. And it, Satan does not change. He do it today. He, he still does the same thing today. He will try, he will place doubt in your heart to doubt what the Lord is saying, to doubt his promises. But beloved, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead, lean not unto your own understanding, but acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him in your circumstances. Acknowledge him in your ways. And he has promised to direct your path. Glory to God. God is faithful. God is faithful. And, and we as children, you know, growing up as children, as you watch children as they grow up, when they first learn how to walk, they stumble and they fall. And as they grow older, they stumble and they fall and they make mistakes. We as believers, hallelujah, we stumble and we fall and we make mistakes. That's for those who are humble enough to admit that. You know, I have made mistakes in my Christian walk. I have made bad decisions in my Christian walk and, and have not uh, listened to the Lord. But now, hallelujah, going through and been through what I've been through, I have learned to trust the Lord with all my heart and not to lean to my own understanding. Glory to God that my life belongs to him. Hallelujah. It's not me that own my life. Hallelujah. Even though he gives me a choice. Hallelujah. That I can choose to own my life. But it is through Christ, the Messiah. Hallelujah. But it's through Christ, the Messiah, hallelujah, that owns my life. And uh, I think I missed three minutes, um, three minutes of recording off of my Twitter, uh, tweet casting. So b trust in the Lord, beloved. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And he has promised to direct your path. Glory to God. Just trust in him. Glory to God. Lean up on him. He is able to deliver you. He is able to set you free. Whatever you're going through, talk to the Lord about it. If you have a habit, talk to the Lord about it. Hallelujah. Nowadays, it's uh, uh, because nowadays it's hard to trust even those that call upon the name of the Lord. But you yourself can go boldly before the throne of grace in time of need. And he has promised to help you in your time of need. Talk to the Lord about it. Glory to God. Talk to him about it. Be real with him. God wants real children that will be real and honest with them. Father, I make mistakes. I don't know it all. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know it all, and I don't want to ever pr be presented in that way that I know it all. 
glory to God, because people that, when you pick up uh, that sense that they think they know it all, they're hard to teach. They're unteachable. Uh, let us have a teachable spirit. A teachable spirit. A teachable spirit is humble. Glory to God. Take it to the Father. Hallelujah. Anything that you're going through, talk to the Father about it. And he will send you confirmation. Since I've been doing um, this study in Romans, the Lord sends me confirmations that I'm on the right track. I'm on the right road where I'm, I'm walking in his will. And that is to teach his word. Hallelujah. To, draw, to teach you to draw closer to Christ. Because we're definitely living in the last days. The king is returning. Hallelujah. And he wants you to come close to him. Draw close to him with, with all your worries, with all your pain, with all your heartache. Draw close to him. Talk to him about it. And I guarantee you, beloved, that the Lord will pour out his peace upon you. You may be going through a tornado, but God will place you in the eye of the storm where there is peace, where there is safety. He will cover you. He will keep you. Glory to God. He is your strong tower. He will place you in a fortified city where he will protect you. Glory to God. He will keep you, beloved. I'm a living testimony of that, that he will keep you. Well, beloved, let us close out in prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this lesson in Romans chapter 1, verses 14 through 17. Father, give us understanding of those three verses. Help us to understand, Lord, that nothing will separate us from your love, O oh Lord. Help us to know, Father, that we can place our trust in you, that we can, everything that we go through, Lord, we can come and place it at your feet. And, Father, that you would take care of it, Father. We thank you for your divine protection. We thank you, Lord, that we are covered under the shadows of your wings. We thank you, Father, that you deal with those who trouble us, O oh Lord God at our jobs, at home, Father, wherever we are, that you are dealing with the hearts of those that trouble us, O oh Lord. And we pray for our enemies, Lord. We pray for those that despitefully use us. We pray for those that hate us without a cause, O oh Lord. We pray, Father, that you would bring them into the true revelation knowledge of Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, that it is through him that they can be saved, O oh Lord, that they can be born again. Father, that they do not have to face your wrath that is to come, O oh Father, but that they can be saved, Lord, that they can become a part of your kingdom, that they, become, they, they can become a son of God, a daughter of you, Lord God. We pray for our enemies, Lord, that you would save them. And we thank you, Lord, for your word on today. Father, send your angels before us on today and prepare the way. Father, pour out your divine favor upon us today. Father, with man, Father, at our jobs, Lord, at our workplace, wherever we go, that your spirit, Father, will be with us, Lord, that mercy and peace will be with us, O oh Father. And we thank you, Lord, hallelujah, for your blessing, Father, for truth, that you are faithful, Father, that you are just and that you are righteous, and that all everything that we go through, Father, is working out for our good. Thank you, Lord, because you have called us for a purpose, Lord. And we thank you, Father. Let your will be done in our life and not ours, Lord. We thank you, Father. In Yeshua Hamashiach's name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, beloved. God bless you. God bless you on this Friday. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We'll meet again tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is Saturday. And I'm going into part two of spiritual warfare. And um, part two of kingdom living on tomorrow. And Monday we will pick back up on our study in Romans. Well, until then, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God's face shine upon you as you continue to seek his face and sit at his feet and learn of him. Until then, beloved, God bless and shalom.